Coming up on First Updates now, it's a teacher takeover. Christine, Justin, and Mike are here uh, to share their perspectives and ideas on how teams might be able to move forward in this upcoming season. And trust me, there are some different opinions on what is the best, best pass moving forward. So I can't wait to discuss this. Uh, Take from Fun Trivia, Gauntlet is going to be here where we've doubled the trivia amount to $140. We've got to take on all three of our guests uh, this evening. All this and more coming up on First Updates Now. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now is able to create content thanks to viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. All right, welcome to the first updates now. I'm your host, Tyler Olds, and tonight is once again a teacher takeover. Uh, some of you may not know that the rest of the uh, fun leadership team, with the exception of me, uh, is actually a teacher. I'm the dropout teacher of the group, by the way, but we do have these uh, three amazing individuals uh, to represent uh, different levels of, of teaching as well to our different, I don't know if level's the right word, right? But different yeah, areas sure. of teaching uh, that they're in. So mm. if you got any questions, uh, we're going to be going into a lot of interesting things this evening. Make sure you take out First Updates Now uh, for this. And if you're interested, if you're watching live and playing trivia, message First Updates Now either on Twitch or shoot Tyler me a message on Discord, uh, and that will get you going for that. Um, so with that said lots to go on here today and i do want to uh, reintroduce uh of course you should be familiar with all these hosts if you watch fun on a regular basis uh but let's bring everybody back by the way i just want to say it's great to have everybody back it's been what do we say on pre-show five months since five we've months, all been crazy. together five months yeah, yeah. A really long so, time so yeah, yeah so it is nice to have everybody uh, uh our core team back on here uh, our fun our fun frc top 25 team is back on here so uh christine i'm going to ask you to start with you uh and for everybody can you just say uh, uh what what do you teach what subjects and then uh, for two of you that are mentors, who you're mentoring as well, too, for teams. Yep. So um, I'm Christine. I teach elementary art. Um, this is my ninth year of teaching, which is kind of insane to think. Um, and that's like postgraduate. That's not including the student teaching or anything else. But um, I teach in Norwood. I've taught in Norwood since the start of my career, which has been really rewarding. Um, this, was, this past year was my first year that I would have seen students that I taught my first year graduate. So... It was a, uh, it was kind of stinky to have you know COVID come in, but my district did a really good job of um, doing a graduation ceremony for the seniors. But I teach elementary art. Um, last year I was at three schools teaching K through fifth grade, and I taught 609 students between my three schools wow. in five days. Um, wow. I got my undergrad in teaching. Um, I went to Massachusetts College of Art and Design for art education. I knew from day one. Um, going into college that I wanted to be a teacher and definitely uh it's been interesting to see what the elementary public like system has been changed into in the last nine years but yeah that's my uh that's my day job and I mentor team 125 the neutrons and our huge um 4-h hub of family programs underneath us so yeah that is me as teacher all right Justin uh I'm Justin Montoys. I teach uh, intro to engineering and intro to computer science, so high school level. Um, I teach mostly freshmen, as you might guess, with uh, the intro courses. Um, I'm, I've been teaching six years. I absolutely love it. Um, it gives me a great opportunity to connect with students in the classroom. And then, obviously, with FRC, um, I'm one of the lead mentors of Team 3015, Ranger Robotics, and we're located in Spencerport, New York. And hey, Mike. Crazy. Justin, it's been six years for you. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I'm really excited to be back here with uh, um, all three of my co-hosts. I um, really miss you guys. And like you said, Tyler, it's been it's uh, really crazy because we have an elementary art teacher, a high school technology teacher, and um, I'm actually a nursing instructor for a uh, state school in New York, uh, State University of New York. We call it SUNY. Um, and I'm actually, so I graduated from nursing school in 2014 and got my master's in nursing education uh, by 2018. It actually went back and I'm working at my alma mater school that I went to. So uh, very exciting there. So um, I have a different, um, you know, kind of perspective. This is all hitting uh, me a little differently because I, I teach 100 percent online um, for for my students in the program that I teach in. So uh, very excited for tonight. I look forward to some great conversation. 
And yeah, I'm Tyler Olds, and I'm a, uh, a college dropout for technology education. Um, so that's my teaching background. But no, uh, it's great <laughs> to have everybody on uh, and to give these perspectives, as mentioned. I mean, of course, you know, not not only is it you know having an elementary, high school, and you know a college teacher on here, uh, but everybody's got different opinions on things, right? And everybody's got different ideas for things, and everybody's got different ways. And the reality is, there's no right way, right? If we had one, it would already be solved already, right? And going that way. So I'm very interested in hearing. Uh, the different uh, uh, aspects, the different thought process of these, and we'll kind of do some roundtables for these. But chat once again, if you have anything uh, that you either want um, uh, any of these uh, teachers, hosts to uh, uh, talk about um, uh, or anything in particular, make sure you take out first updates now. We'll get to that as we go through here. I'm always we'll just kind of grab each person and have some good back and forth and some uh, general topics that we have. And then, of course, we'll do that take from front trivia uh, a little bit later. So uh, we'll show it anyways. With that said, as we uh, move into our let's talk about that or let's discuss that. And starting with our first topic here, let's talk teams uh, and, and going back uh, through here. Actually, before I get the teams, uh, Christine touched on it a little bit, so let, let's let's elaborate a little bit more on that. Is uh, right now, as things sit, uh, what is your current uh, districts or colleges plan right now in regards to back to school? And I know Mike might be a little bit different for you since you're online uh, for things, but uh, Christine, I'd love to start with you. Uh, what have you heard from your district in regards to back to school uh, and what is the plan moving forward? And when are you actually supposed to go back to school at this point? So um, in the state of Massachusetts, it's obviously a bit trickier than I would say um, most states because we were one of the first concentrated kind of hotspots. And we have the variable of incoming students in the college, like college students coming in and out. And that's true of like the greater Boston area, not just the city specifically. So there's been literally daily updates and changes in terms of what the state is requiring and allowing. Um, in terms of my district that I work for, not where my team is from, um, we're still in the process of developing three um, models. And it's been an ongoing process since before school even really ended to some degree. Um, so right now, Norwood Public Schools, we typically start um, after Labor Day. And in Massachusetts, the governor allowed a 10 day um, extension for when the student should be coming back to school. So that's gonna give um, my district and other districts in the state time if they choose to take those 10 extra days to get their teachers trained on any new materials um, and really just like get their bearings because I mean, every single day, at least in this state, and I'm sure it's true in a lot of other states, we're getting um, you know, new recommendations from the CDC, from you know, other departments within the state that are monitoring things closely. So it's, it's evolving. We're currently working on a hybrid model for students and me as a specialist at multiple schools, um, it's, it's definitely been a challenge even trying to wrap my head around how I can safely teach remotely um, or you know, in person to some degree if we're doing the hybrid model. Um, I know in the state of Massachusetts, thank God today the governor also extended the eviction um, kind of deadline that was looming over the entire country. So at least I, that was something that obviously was on my mind as a teacher, knowing that there are students that I teach and that I mentor that could very well be facing eviction, uh, that being another piece. But anyway, so our district's um, really like crunching to figure out how we can afford each of these models if we need to hire additional staffing. Um, it's it's a never ending challenge. And I will say, uh, and we'll probably talk more about this later, but as cheesy as this sounds, being on a first team, I'm very used to working remotely with people on very important things um, and having to kind of like, you know, do a little extra legwork or I have at least some experience using, you know, different platforms to help improve communication and all those things. So it's been really interesting and frustrating uh, to watch, you know, people try to figure out this huge problem with not enough time, not enough money. Like, does that sound familiar? Yes. Um, <laughs> and knowing that like these simple little things that we do like on my team as like a everyday practice that is like intuitive to me and even my students has never even been like a, a thought in some of our administrators' minds because they, they never had a need for it. So. I feel lucky that I have the experience with, you know, from my team in high school and everything else and with my students to on my own try to navigate this. And I'm trying to help my colleagues keep up to date with all the changes, which I'm sure Mike and Justin can say more about. But it's it's never ending. Um, and I don't know. I just 
I think everybody that would be watching this would understand that like we're doing our best and every teacher has the best intentions for everybody and there is no right answer but I don't know we're supposed to be starting maybe the 16th of September um, but still gotta vote on stuff so that's where we are in Norwood. Yeah, and, and chat. Something I'd like to uh, ask you too. If, if let us know what your district's plans currently are right now, uh, and what your thoughts on are as well too. Love to hear some different perspectives coming in from our live audience on how you feel about that. And we'll uh, move on. Uh, so Justin, uh, in in high school, you're in Rochester, right? Uh, talk to us a little bit about what's mm -hmm. going on in Rochester right now. So you're going to hear some similar themes um, because Christine and I are both in public schools. Um, not too often does one public school um, system really stray too far from the norm. I mean, everyone is pretty, every, you know, I've, I've researched not only in our area, um, in the Rochester area where most schools are doing the same thing or very similar things across the country, most schools seem to be um, headed in the, in the same direction, which is we are looking at a hybrid model and a 100% remote model. So parents had to have the option under the, again, nothing has been approved or finalized yet. Like Christine said, everything is still very much up in the air. Um, but parents do have the opportunity to keep their kids home full time if they choose, or um, the hybrid model right now looks like it's kids go to school two days a week and then they're remote um, the other three days. And that just is trying to keep the number of people uh, in the building low, which, which does make a lot of sense. Um, as far as what that's gonna look like for teachers and students, we still don't know yet. Um, I just wanna echo again what Christine said, People are working on it, and and you know I think all of us got into education because we love kids, we love students, um, and we, that's what we want to get back to. Nobody in the nobody in the country wants to get back into the classroom more than teachers, um, but we want to make sure we do it smart and safe. And um, people are working on the problem, so I think that from what I've heard so far, um, you know across the country for schools that haven't started yet, the hybrid model makes a lot of sense. I know parents, some parents and students are frustrated. They want to be in school five days a week. And I think that that is uh, eventually, you know, what, what, we, what we will get back to, but um, to rush it now just seems silly. You know, I, we all want to get back in the classroom. I understand that. I want to get back in the classroom too. Um, but I think that, you know, we'll take our time. People are resistant to change, but also super adaptable. So I think whatever ends up going on, just like Christine said, know that everyone's doing their best. We just want to make sure everything is um, as safe as possible and we just do the best that we can. I'm, I'm not looking forward to necessarily um, the remote aspect of it, but I think that there's also an opportunity for, um, for example, like a snow day, right? So if we're all remote and all of us in the Northeast, you know, if we have good experience with the remote model and it looks like school is going to be closed for, you know, maybe two or three days for a snowstorm, school can continue if we get some practice with, you know, a remote model. So things like that. So I do think that there can be some advantages. It isn't all doom and gloom. Um, and we'll just have to take it one day at a time and see what happens. So one thing to uh, point out as we go through um, is location as well, too, where everybody's speaking from. Uh, Mike, I think will be a little bit different. I don't know, Mike, if you know what's going on with, with the district that where you live right now from a local district. Uh, but I'd love to hear your perspective as a uh, fully online uh, instructor. And is your is your college completely online as well, too? Is everything? So, your yeah, so I'll give a, I'll give a little kind of background. So the program I teach in the nursing department at this um, this school at the state school um, they do have some programs like mine that are all online some you know aren't uh or most you know most aren't so i do not teach in the traditional nursing program so traditional nursing is you know when students you know go for their four years or you know transfer into the last two years of nursing school there or whatever like that so the program i teach in actually um is already practicing registered nurses they've already gone to nursing school um so you can go to nursing school and get your associate's degree you can go get your bachelor's degree they do the same job after graduation there's just some benefits to a bachelor sometimes there's more pay for bachelor's stuff like that in new york there's a legislation that's called um, bsn in 10 so bachelors of science in nursing in 10 years after you graduate uh, if you graduated with your associates, um, I graduated, with, you know, I graduated with my bachelor's degree, so um, I didn't have to do that. Anybody that gets their associates has to go back and, get, and complete that within 10 years. So our program um, takes those who are already associate degree nurses that are, you need to go back for their bachelor's degree. So it was a hybrid. Um, it was a hybrid uh, program like five years ago or something. It has since gone to fully online. Um, so this has not really affected us all that well. And I'm going to be honest, like I don't 
read a whole lot of the emails about how it, you know, what the school is up to just because one, it doesn't apply to me. One also, because I'm so far away right now, I'm in California. Um, so I'm not really visiting campus. Um, though there is multidimensional is kind of like, um, what Christine was alluding to. So not only is there, you know, the, the federal, what's going on, federal recommendations, there's state recommendations, there's local, uh, for our state university, there's the SUNY recommendations. So they're all, so they have all their stuff that's going on too. So there's a lot that's changing. Um, there's a lot that's going on. Um, that I think for the most part, things are, um, trying to go on as um, as normal as possible. I know that I think they're maybe reducing some class sizes, you know, teachers have to wear uh, face shields, social distancing, all that kind of stuff. Um, for me, not much has changed. And I, I can't imagine what it would be like to have to go to all online when you're not used to that environment already. Um, I came into this job oriented right to how to teach online, how to set up online courses, how to communicate with students that way. Um, so I just can't mm -hmm. imagine what it's like when you don't have that background. And I do really understand um, understand the struggle, you know, and, and what that and what that can uh, mean for our for our teachers. So uh, my brother is also a tech uh, a middle school tech teacher. So I'm getting kind of his, you know, similar yeah. similar stories and stuff to what Justin's alluding to and what Kristen's alluding to as well. So um, doesn't so thankfully, like for me, really not really nothing changed. Um, however. Like I said, so since it's already nurses, they, you know, a lot of them have families, they have full time jobs. So what kind of changed for us was how to support our students that were going through this. So students that had maybe mandatory overtime um, or their kids, you know, stop going, you know, stop going to school and they had to help homeschool them at home all while still working full time and going to school. So that's really kind of all that changes how how to better support our students. Um, but as far as the, the modality and everything like that nothing really but um so it was really you know hearing stories from our students about you know nurses um you know and families um what they were going through was um you know just really it was really sad to hear in some cases of you know what was going on so that's kind of what's going on in my world but yeah so i'll, I'll chime just really quick on what's going on in, in wisconsin which has kind of been if it trying to keep all politics aside, uh, a big epicenter in regards to uh, uh, rights, in regards to uh, mandatory masks and that sort of thing like that and things going on. Uh, so in my city in particular, which is different than all the other cities around me, uh, K through five is actually going back full time uh, in classroom uh, for that. That's the current plan right now. Uh, and then uh, six through 12 is going to be that hybrid model you talked about. But I think it's interesting with the uh, that the younger ages they are sending back at, at this rate uh, full time, um, and the, the on top of that is they do Wisconsin does have an online option, but you had to make that decision by the end of July if you're going to do that or not. So that's uh, just an interesting way. Just reading off a couple things from chat uh, to give some different uh, inputs on here. Uh, Redstoner uh, three three one says fully remote for first semester in Bellevue. Um, Sal Penguin says Catholic school opening up for orientation next week with classes starting the Monday after. Uh, Bassoon guy. Uh, 7173, uh, my college is uh, into the building for technical and online for math and English. Exocito uh, 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 says our particular school is fully remote, fully remote learning for the fall, and then they're going to reevaluate uh, at the end of the first quarter. That's interesting to see. Uh, Jay uh, Halgel, sorry if I'm going to butcher your names here, teacher from California here. We're all remote uh, to begin the state. Uh, so, uh, Hannah, Hannah F seven says I teach at a small private school in uh, Pennsylvania right now. We are opening with a hybrid model, but could transition to online classes if they begin to spike in our country again, uh, or County again, sorry, uh, all the public, uh, school districts are going fully virtual. Um, and if I miss anything else going in, into here, just, uh, interesting to see just how different parts of, and obviously this is very U S centric, uh, for this as well as this is a, a big epicenter for things, but just to see the different perspectives on that. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit, a little bit about, um, teams in particular. So this is going to channel a little bit more about Justin and Christine who are currently mentors on teams, uh, for things. And, and Mike, you're always more than willing to chime in for this, but, uh, how does this impact your teams right now? And, I, you know, I don't know um, as far as you, if your FRC teams also have FLL and FTC, uh, but FLL and FTC do have some plans already for remote uh, competitions and remote meetings um, as well out there. So uh, there are already some ideas out there. We haven't seen really anything concrete from FRC at large saying that they're going to be working on it. Uh, but right now, as it sits where you are living, how are you going to be approaching uh, the fall season, and if things continue at a, at a current trend, 
uh, where we, we can't all be back in person or you choose not to be, how does that look for you in the uh, 2021 build season? Kristen, you can go if you want. I'm not going to lie. I have listened to that question. So Dustin, you can go first. I'll go. And that's fine. It's, um, so I was responding as, to him. Yep. I wasn't that's okay. like, yeah. um, as far as what things look like, I guess I'll start with the FOL. Um, like I said, I am one of the lead mentors of Team 3015 Range Robotics, which is our FRC team. Um, we actually have two FRC teams. Um, well, they didn't get a chance to compete, unfortunately, but we did have a rookie, an all-rookie FRC team as well. Um, and then we have um, uh, a dozen uh, FOL teams and then junior mm -hmm. FOL teams uh, after that. So um, the I don't want to say the problem, but what we're facing now is that they are all school-based teams. So the most recent um, document, official document from the school outlining um, what the return, uh, the hybrid plan that I ha had discussed and the, the remote plan um, specifically said that all sport, all sports activities, extracurriculars, all that stuff is canceled for further notice. So um, until we hear different, you know, is it canceled in nothing. person or just canceled period? So it, 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 they said canceled. They didn't met, uh, necessarily um, mince words with in person or virtual. Sure. But um, as far as I know, there's no there's no plans for virtual meetings or anything like that. Our um, our FRC team um, uses Slack uh, significantly during the build season um, to collaborate and stuff. So we have the opportunity to like I'm see a kid send messages and we're we're using Slack throughout this. But as far as like meeting and, and planning, I think everything is just so up in the air right now and parents are concerned like um, trying to make the decision of am I sending my kid to school two days a week? Am I doing full remote? So all those decisions still have to happen before they can even think about, you know, am I gonna you know, have my kid after after being um, logged into a school uh, Zoom call all day to then do another two hour FOL meeting after that. So I just think that, you know, all that stuff, everyone's just kind of waiting with bated breath to see what school is going to look like in September, how the first month of school goes, and then we'll kind of take it one step at a time after that. And chat, by the way, we'd love to hear, uh, see a couple of people already posting. Uh, what is your team's current plan regardless of what program you're in? Uh, is your school even allowing you to meet at all? I know a couple of people said, uh, Red Stoner said that they can't even meet in person at all. Uh, so love to hear what your plans are as well, too, as we go over to Christine. Yeah, so um, the Neutrons are based out of Revere High School now that we're not out of Northeastern, which honestly, I was actually telling Brandon the other night, I was like, I can't even imagine how difficult it would be like even more so than it already is for our team to like even access anything at this point, if it were still in the basement of, you know, the engineering building at Northeastern. Um, we, this past season before it came to a screeching halt, um, we were really settled into the new place at Revere high school, which was really nice. And we haven't been at our lab since like March, um, yeah. which has sucked. And, I would say, like, I, I didn't realize, I, like, naively was like, well, it could be worse. Like, at least we're a 4-H team. And Brandon was like, you realize we're at a massive disadvantage because we're in a city. Like, we haven't been to our lab since March. And Revere right now is actually spiking, unfortunately, to the point where they last minute canceled the graduation that they had been planning for the graduating class since, I don't know, oh, wow. June. Um, but they apparently last minute let kids walk across the stage today without anybody there. But anyway, so... We've not been in our lab, but we've been meeting regularly. Like Justin said, our team meets on Slack. We've been using Slack um, since before the pandemic. And we're going to be running an internal competition in the fall with our team. Um, and we typically start the fall with FTC anyway. Um, this past year, we were lucky enough to get really like dug into the middle school and a lot of feeder programs. So we're looking at ways to do that remotely. Obviously, that's a challenge, but something that we had kind of from last season that was supposed to continue into this coming school year was um, we were recipients of the BNY Mellon grant um, within our district. They wanted to support a community in like a kind of city area to grow feeder programs. So we were able to um, use that grant to buy a lot of kits and a lot of um, like team equipment stuff that even if we don't register new FLL teams, like the existing kits that we have, they've been touched in months. Um, so they're safe to kind of distribute. Um, but besides the typical feeder program stuff that I think first is in a really good way of 
um, providing coach resources for both FLL Junior, FLL, and FTC. Mm -hmm. um, all of those programs are so easily integrated into a school curriculum with like student workbooks, coach guides, and all that stuff. And even though somebody who's like, you know, an experienced teacher or mentor wouldn't necessarily need those, like that's something that you can do remotely. Um, obviously, you don't want to be glued to a laptop for the entirety of your life just so you can participate in first. But like, there are I mean, different I do it, ways. So. Yeah, I mean, our students are starting to utilize that. Um, Brandon was just telling me that, that our team's internal competition that we're going to be doing in the fall, it's going to be fully autonomous um, or remotely controlled um, with a couple mentors that, that'll be there to stage robots. Like our um, lead mentor, Josh, he is a physics teacher at Revere High School. Um, so he's going to be able to go in and access his own uh you know, like building and stuff, and we'll be able yeah. to go and luckily get things. So we're going to make the best of what we have. We're all really good at working remotely. Um, the thing that has been interesting to kind of see as a team is like, it's it's been nice to see that our students are mindful and respectful of the fact that like, we will tell them when we're allowed to like physically meet again. Um, it is really hard to see like other teams or people that you know, like around the country that are in places where it's safer to, you know, meet and, you know, maybe they're meeting in person or they've been able to make PPE, but like we haven't been able to do any of that. And it's been nice to see that they're not like antsy or like pushy or whatever. Like we're still meeting regularly and we're able to kind of get things moving from the circumstances that we have. So. So I want to read off a couple, just a couple of uh, things from chat. Um, and then, uh, Mike, I'd love to bring you on something as well too here. So uh, uh, OXCDO says uh, we're thinking uh, that going to find a temporary build space outside of the school so we have somewhere uh, we can do training in. And then if the district's plan is to reopen, we'll either go back into the school for the build season or we're going to have to build out of the space we find. Which I think is interesting, especially from a liability standpoint and how you potentially handle uh, something yeah. like that. I would, yeah. Yeah, lots uh, to do with that. <laughs> A bunch of red flags just went off in my brain. Um, yeah. We, so uh, I, I would say if the person that said that in chat is not an adult, I would approach your mentors with um, your desire to do that and then look into how you can do that with some sort of like coverage. Uh, you can do it through yeah. 4-H. You could do it other ways, but you cannot just go rent a building and then meet and say that you're your team if you're affiliated with like there are just too many um mm -hmm. liability issues yeah. it's definitely how you get sued yeah. for yeah. things so. yeah oh, yeah, yeah. bingo <laughs> that would be me in high school being like guys let's just go meet like behind that dumpster yeah. nobody will know like just don't <laughs> do it so, sounds right in, it sounds right in your mind right <laughs> so uh hannah uh, hannah f7 says we're still waiting to find out uh what is going to happen for activities but i have heard rumors and then if we can meet our non-school employee mentors will most likely not be allowed to building. That is a great point. I was definitely going to ask about yep. that uh, in, in a second. Uh, we have been meeting virtually since March, but not been in the building since March 12th. Um, and I'll, I'll bring that in. Mike, I had a, a separate question for you. And I'll grab that afterwards here. But uh, that's a great point. Uh, you know, if I'm just a mentor and I want to go into a building to work with high school students, what extra precautions, what extra waivers, what extra uh, screenings need to take place uh, for something like that who's not affiliated as a student or a staff member in a school district? That's got to be a crazy thing, too. So, all right. Um, so, Mike, uh, something I want to bring you in on uh, on here is is remote learning for things. As somebody who, uh, you know, teaches online exclusively and goes out route for it, what – advice can you give to you know maybe other teachers or teams or anything like that who are looking at potentially transitioning uh fully online for for curriculum and for studies and for uh for collaborating as a team uh what are some things that you've learned in your time at, at teaching uh strictly online yeah so um the online world is um can be difficult at times um for me um we have uh, students that are you know, just out of nursing school at 19, all the way up to um, nurses who, since this legislation has, has gone into place, are, you know, 50 or kind of at the end of their career. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's challenging for us because technology-wise, um, some people are there, some people aren't there. Um, so just, you know, some suggestions is just to be flexible, um, just to know that there's going to be issues, try to make it very simple, um, over-explain things is sometimes to a fault. That's what I do, or repeat repeat myself a lot. Um 
And then, yeah, so be flexible. Um, that, and then just understand your students have many different learning styles. Some are auditory, some are visual, some are, you know, kinetic. Um, so just try to have activities out there um, that, you know, or vary it up. You know, it's like for, for nursing classes, a lot of, you know, it could be a lot of just death by PowerPoint kind of thing, you know. So, so you so send vary- everybody a body, right? And that's how they- <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, so just like vary from, it up uh, when you can. From the office. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so just vary it, you know, try to try to appeal to as, and to different learners and, and, and different styles. And sometimes you just can't, you have to kind of stick to a certain thing. Uh, but when you can um, explore other things, you know, maybe things that you're not comfortable with, but that maybe somebody else in your class would be comfortable with. Um, and yeah, I think that's kind of just off the top of my head what, what came to my mind. So one of the things looking as we uh, uh, look towards the future for things, um, I'm going to ask a tough question here and you can choose to just say yes or no, or if you want to give more of an explanation, uh, we can do that. But at some point, you know, we're going to get back to an all in-person class at some point, right? We don't know if, you know, if it's a few months, if it's whatever, if a vaccine becomes available, publicly available, it's something that's been gone through FDA approval, uh, all the, I don't even know if FDA is the right thing, but if it's gone through that approval uh, for it or CDC recommended for it, should all students, staff members, anybody else entering the building be required to have that vaccine uh, prior to uh, interacting with other uh, students or, or being as part of your team? How do you, how does each one of you feel about that? Uh, I can start. I mean, I don't think personally for me, I don't think that needs to be a recommendation um, nor, you know, I don't, it's just, you know, with the, the vaccines that we have, have been around, you know, for a very long time. Um, and I'm really encouraged, actually, by the data that's out there, at least concerning chil- like children, like school age children, sure. um, about how this um, affects them, how it, you know, isn't as severe as adults. I had some stats pulled up earlier. Yep, we got them. Up um, there. Oh, you do. Okay. Um, so these are um, some. I got them from the CDC. I put in the the last, the bold, the percentage of deaths because I was just curious. So um, these are this is the age group that we're talking about. So total deaths of how many of these this age group has died, um, which part of those were COVID deaths. And then like, now I put these in for, for some comparison too. Then you have pneumonia, you have influenza too. So um, the percentage of the co- of all the deaths of this age group, the percentage of COVID deaths was uh, a little less than 1%, pneumonia a little less than two, and uh, influenza is um, you know, almost well, 28 and a half, whatever. So um, other things like the, um, let me just try to pull them up quick. I got them over here. Um, so that the the there's the number of children cases of children were less than 0.1 percent of all COVID cases. Um, it's also shown that children don't show as they're more um, asymptomatic. You know, they don't show as many symptoms of it. Um, it doesn't um, get as severe. Those that did those children that did get it, um, I think it was like 40% of those had comorbidities, a lot of them obesity or respiratory illnesses or something like that. So, um, you know, with, with everything that we do, you know, there's, there's everything that we do in life, there's risk to it. Right. So like we drive our car, there's a risk. We fly an airplane, there's risk. We go out and ride our bike or walk, you know, we, we weigh that risk every, every day. And, um, you know, it's like an analogy that I heard that really kind of, put it in perspective is like in the winter time, which all of us know in the Northeast here is, um, you know, do you want heat in the winter? Yes. But then it's, well, how much heat, you know, so how much risk are we willing to be absorbed? I know a lot of data is still coming out on this and we're still learning, but from the, from the studies that I've seen very encouraged, at least with this age group, school age, age group, sure. um, uh, that it's, that we're in pretty good shape children wise. So, so Christine and Justin, I'll let you respond, but the question I have for you as in-classroom teachers is how does that impact you or maybe other older staff members? Uh, you know, if children are not as, you know, as likely to, to die from something like this, uh, do, how do you combat then older staff members or staff members who have pre-existing conditions that might be uh, more greatly impacted by something like this? Yeah, um, I think the biggest, sorry, Christine, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I just think the biggest, you know, sometimes, and this is a complicated issue for sure. Um, Sometimes uh, the best thing to do in a complicated situation is try to simplify it. And I think the best thing we can do is just listen to the science and trust the science. And, you know, I don't know how science became like such a, a, 
a political thing, but like I, I guess right now I I can't say yes. Everything everyone should be forced to take the vaccine, right? The vaccine has to go through trials, and we need to learn the side effects and all that kind of stuff. Now, certainly, once all that stuff comes out, we can make a more educated choice on that. Um, but I guess I don't feel necessarily comfortable right now just saying yes. Of course, everyone should should get the vaccine, even though they probably should. Um, I, I want to be careful though about looking at like just the, the death rate for kids. Yes, the death rate is, is super low for kids. And um, I think that's great, obviously. But, you know, I've seen so many instances, especially in um, uh, the African-American community, where it's it's not, you know, it's not mom and dad that are picking them up from school. Grandma and grandpa. So, yes, like getting, you know, kids back in, in school is important, but there are so many other things. Like what's going to happen when, you know, student A really needs to get home from school um, maybe not comfortable taking the bus, and their only option is grandma, who's you know 65, 75 years old. So it's it's I think it's it's certainly a complicated issue. And I think the best thing we can do is just listen to the experts and um, make a decision based on that. I want to bring Christine in a little there, get the opinion, and if we have any other follow ups, we can uh, wrap up with that as well too. Yeah, I mean, I everybody has their own choice when it comes to like their health and their body. But at the same time for public education, you have to have proof that you have X, Y, and Z vaccinations uh, in order to register your child or your student for public, public education. So if my state feels as though these students need to have some you know, vaccine or whatever form of protection to protect themselves and their teachers and the staff members, then that's the state's decision. And that's hopefully like I I am very fortunate and I'm glad that I was able to get hired in the state of Massachusetts um, in a town like Norwood where the people that you know are, were elected into their positions um, care about education and care about kids and actually you know are listening to scientists so I'm fortunate that the people that are making those choices are doing those things um, I fear for people that aren't living in states like that. Um, like one of my best friends, Adrian Emerson, world's best, you know, female teacher is in a state in Texas where, you know, coach Norm is going remote right now, but Adrian is like in school getting ready oh. with her colleagues. So like, yeah. and obviously the, when it comes down to like, you're required to do this or that you you can only do so much. Like I, as a teacher, can't force anybody to do anything. I can't even put my hands on a kid. I would never touch a kid, but whatever the state thinks is best for us to safely be teaching those students and those students to be in an environment around, you know, X amount of people, that's what I'm going to listen to. And that's what I hope my students' parents listen to. Listen to science is really the moral of the story. Yeah, and this is obviously a tough topic, uh, you know, and the reason why we want to talk about this openly, you know, with everybody is to provide these different perspectives out there and let you, the viewer, you know, make your decisions, do your research on things. Don't just listen to us and what we have to say, uh, but do your decision, make your, do your research to make educated decisions as we go through this. But it's important still to get different perspectives uh, as we go through for this Um and, and as we continue to move forward with this, you know, if you if you didn't get a chance to watch our COVID show that Mike was on uh, prior with a couple other fantastic uh, uh, people as well, too. It's just it's interesting to see when that show happened back in April compared to where we are now and just how <laughs> things change over time uh, and how that might impact, you know, you know, not just schools, but life uh, in general. Uh, on here as well too. Uh, so I do want to get a couple more questions. We're going to be uh, starting trivia in just about five minutes. Uh, so if you are interested, once again, if you're watching live and you want to play trivia against this uh, amazing astute panel who's going to collaborate together and form the Ghidra of uh, FRC first trivia uh, with the three heads, you know. The, the what, Tyler? Isn't Ghidra the three-headed uh, thing from Godzilla? Man, I love learning new. I, I love learning new stuff. Right. That was that's a new one for me. I like that though. The All right, so I'm gonna, yeah, yeah it shoots like lightning it. out of their mouths. It's like Godzilla's biggest foe. You know, some might say space right. Godzilla, but you know, everybody's got their own thing. I feel like I'm significantly behind on random fun facts because I haven't been physically around my students since <laughs> yeah, right? March. The amount of like incredibly bizarre, but usually totally dead on information I get from them is amazing. Like I learned that dragonflies are born underwater and then they eventually emerge from their <laughs> disgusting, like egg cocoon chrysalis thing and then dry off and fly away. Like 
I miss that part of being by, around my students. By the way, Chad, these are the discussions that we typically have at random times with each other. So yeah. this is very oh, natural yeah. for the four of us to have this, this is normal. type of random tangent on things. Sometimes <laughs> so. I get caught up in like the high school lingo and I'm like, we're going to go back to school and I'm starting saying stuff. They're going to be like, Montoya, no one, no one says that anymore. <laughs> it's like five months out of date. I'm like, oh gosh, I got to learn all over yeah. again. Nobody says YOLO yeah. anymore. That was five years yeah. ago, right? No so, one says that. You're so, second, right. second generation one. YOLOers. <laughs> Are we boomers? I hope not. Um, anyway, <laughs> no. Natalie, Na, Natalie Laney um, has been bringing up some really good yeah. stuff that I think we need to kind of yeah, what you got showcase. For us? So she was um, bringing up, where is it? Reopening schools will hit our black and brown families living in poverty way more, which I completely agree with. And every time I've been in a meeting lately, and I'm sure it's super annoying to the people that I work with, but I'm like, is there anybody that is identifying families that were already in crisis before this pandemic started? Like the kids that I was desperately trying to like get art supplies to, or like, you know, check in with who's looking out for those families right now, because they're not the ones on Facebook that are planning with other families in town, like what learning pods they're going to set up or whatever else, there like they're, you know, back to work schedules or their au pairs. But these families so desperately need other people looking out for them right now. And it's not to say that nobody in the education system cares about them. It's because so many things like Justin had said before are not the way they have been. And if there's one thing I've noticed that like teachers all have in common, regardless of like what they're teaching or their age, we don't love change. We get really good at doing things intuitively. And when you start to change any aspect of that, it's really hard to then kind of readjust every other thing that has the domino effect with it. So when these administrators are trying to figure out, okay, where can I scrape the bottom of the barrel for like money and resources? What grants, like, what can I bargain with our town with? Like we traded dump, dump trucks for math books one year, like in our town when we were so low on money, like administration are definitely like strapped, but there's people that are, like keeping an eye on these things that may not feel like they have the ability to do anything, but you absolutely do. Like the thing that I've been trying to like urge people that are super like big on this on Facebook that I know are actually like gonna go do something if you give them direction, um, not just people that are like, rah, let's hashtag it and share it and like throw a fit. Like go reach out to a local school. Even if you don't have kids there or if you just move to some random town, like look up a school that's near you. It could be an elementary school or whatever, or some like department administrator, like the science department and be like, Hey, I'm, you know, a mentor on a robotics team. And if you needed like, I don't know, a guest for a virtual field trip or like something like that, I'll be willing to talk about my career. Like my robotics students could provide this or that. Like you have just as much like ability to go and actually help somebody directly which like, yes, there's GoFundMes and all that stuff. But the reality is like, I don't have money to go and hand out to people, unfortunately, like, but what I can do is kind of pass along like any like useful thing that could benefit them or like network. Um, one thing that like I tried to do when we were remote is like students are sitting in front of their computers all the time, but instead of, you know, giving them an assignment, I was like, oh, I know a friend of mine from college that works at the Boston Aquarium as a sculptor, like most epic job on the planet. So I got her to agree to do like a um, online assembly with me and did this like big slideshow about like a creative career and there, like little things like that. If somebody had approached me, I don't know, and was like, you know, this is something in the community that I can offer like that, that at least forms some sort of relationship from the teacher who's like freaking out, not knowing what to do or the administrator and their community. So, and that is something that you can do for like, the underserved populations in our community. Um, unfortunately, equity and like, you know, fair is not a word that we can use in public education. Um, like my job is not as fair as like another colleagues of mine. Like I teach 609 students and yet I have somebody who teaches like 20 um, and I'm expected to do the same type of stuff. But anyway, like the, the people that, you know, Natalie's bringing up, like, and it's not just, because of the color of their skin. It's because so many people are already panicking and like trying to come up with a solution that they're not looking around them at the people that need help or could provide help. So I don't know if you are somebody who's not a teacher or you wanna help like do some research cause teachers are a little strapped right now. Um, sat on a ton of meetings today and watched three and a half hours of a school committee meeting that really didn't answer much for me last night. But like, even if you have a teacher that you had forever ago that you know is teaching, 
like back at home, like email them and be like, hey, you doing okay? That's the one thing that people haven't really been asking, I don't think. Like, how are teachers feeling? Or like students, I think I put it in chat, but like if you have any particular strong feeling about something within your district, like reach out to your favorite teacher, or like reach out to your principals or admin or whatever else and be like, this is my feeling about this. They wanna know, like our school committee stopped in the middle of the meeting and was like, have we even asked the kids what their feeling is about coming back? So, yeah. I don't know. Well, Christine, like to, to go, I agree. Like I think every, like you were mentioning earlier, like there's different, different states and different, you know, and different school districts have to do what's, what's best for their, for their population. And that's going to be different, you know, and that's kind of what's hard when you have a state system or a, you know, a huge public school system that, you know, is, you know, across counties or something, you know, I think where it is more out in other places. But I, I would argue too, that the school provides this, this lookout system that you're looking for um, when kids are in school. Um, that, that helps when kids aren't in school, you know, there's the lunches aren't available. The mental health resources aren't available. Um, all of that stuff too. So again, it's not like, I don't think this is a, a, a choice between good and bad. Like it's, it's where, where do we fall on the sign? And that's, I think what's, what's stalling, what's stalling us out at this point, um, is finding where that is and, and what's mm -hmm. best for the students. I think um, it's, go ahead. it's especially difficult too, because I mean, I'm looking around at, you know, friends, family that are working remotely and they are working remotely through the end of the year. Um, and I'm over here with like bubble gum and popsicle sticks trying to hack together, like how I'm going to safely, you know, just teach art like I want to teach and like signed up to teach. Um, I did not sign up to be a bodyguard. I did not sign up to be a medical expert. Um, yeah. I would gladly, you know, make sure that my students are safe, but the I would say like anytime I've talked to teachers and I was talking to Adrian about this the other day like I feel like I'm getting further and further away from what my job really should be not like what I want it to be like sure. I don't have access to a smart board or whatever and I don't honestly I don't care I don't care that I have 609 students and like not enough time to even pee during the day like I I just like I don't know it's it's wild I just I I hope that at some point this is like the long-term change shift that we have been needing for over a decade, obviously. But like, for those of you who want to do something, like obviously do something that will help now, but like the long-term is like research what your like town is doing and why it's not okay. And like elect people into office that'll actually like care and do things that will like promote change. Like, I keep thinking about the like Grace Hopper quote. It's like the most dangerous phrase in the English language is like, we've always done it this way. And I continuously see mm. people falling back into that. And it's like, it's, we're not in any capacity where we were whenever it was like, we have to figure out something new to do. And yeah, I don't know. It's scary, but teachers are resilient, but the community members that rely on the like, you know, MacGyver skills and like talents, and skills because it is a skill it's not it may not be like a a concrete like this is how you achieve this uh skill but like there's a big difference between like a mentor and a teacher sure there's a lot of people that are getting like into the education system that aren't necessarily like teacher teachers and it's always interesting to see like the the shift that happens or doesn't happen with those people um i don't know it's it's interesting but Anyway, let's get on to trivia. Yeah, or I'll so... just stop talking because <laughs> I missed right. you guys, and this is what happens when we talk about things we care good, about. Yeah, we go into good <laughs> rants together. That's that's the way it is. No, appreciate everybody's uh, input on that. Um, we are running a little bit short on time, so we are going to hop into trivia uh, for this. Uh, we have uh, – let me bring on here. I get – I had to run something through Discord for this because it was a little bit different. So let me just make sure I have this uh, set up because apparently either my phone doesn't work for Clan Canada or something was wrong with the numbers on there. So, uh, Greg, are you there? Yep. Awesome. So we got Greg on the line. Uh, so we're going to explain real quick how trivia works, and then we'll ask that uh, Christine, Justin, and Mike either mute or take off their headphones, whatever works best for you. Uh, so there's going to be five questions uh, for trivia uh, coming up on here. You're going to get an opportunity to pass once if you'd like to. We'll come back to it. Uh, and then uh, you need to answer as quickly as possible because there's going to be time. Now, you will be at a distinct uh, advantage in time because... Christine, Mike, and Justin need to collaborate, but you're going to be at a distinct disadvantage because you're going up against three people. But to 
make it a little bit easier or a little bit more lucrative, I should say. We've doubled the amount to $140. Do you have any questions before we get started, Greg? No, seems pretty straightforward. All right, awesome. So uh, with that said, we're gonna ask that Christine, Mike, and Justin uh, either mute or take off their headphones, either one. Later. <laughs> and we'll see them back here uh, in just a minute. And I just realized that since all three of them are playing, I'm gonna need to type in your answers at the same time as I do this. So I apologize if you hear typing in the background. Uh, so with that said, let's get everything set up and ready to go. All right, Greg, your time begins in I'll wave at you, yep. Uh, your time begins in three, two, one. Name the three first LEGO League divisions that were formed this year. Pass. <laughs> Who was the sponsor of the 2019 first robotics game? Uh, Boeing. Name one of the two non-news television shows that first appeared on this year. Uh, Blackish. What was the name, or what is the name of the 2020-2021 FTC Challenge? You with us, Greg? Yeah, I'm just trying to think. I want to say it's replay, but that seems too straightforward. What was the first year that 3v3 play was introduced to FRC? 2004. In time. All right, we'll bring back Christine, Mike, and Justin back on. That's it. That's it. The questions have been answered. Uh, Greg, how do you feel you did? Oh, Greg muted on that. We'll find out how we did afterwards. We'll bring him back on uh, for this as we go through. All right, so. So how much time do we get? Uh, you get unlimited time, but you have to be a minute five um, is what he answered. Oh, yeah, unlimited time. So. Okay. Oh, you know what? I, I messed up. I'm going to give Greg an opportunity. Greg, are you there? I messed up on something. Yeah. Greg, you passed on something. I didn't come back to it. So uh, so sorry, Mike, Justin, Christine, you got to mute. You got to mute again? Yeah, I'm All sorry. Right. Uh, this is my bad. This is what happens when I, when I unfortunately did everything. Um, name one of the three first Lego League divisions. Or name the three first Lego League divisions. Uh, I'm not very involved in other than FRC. All right, no worries. We won't, we won't add any extra time either for you. Okay, now we can bring them back on here and get them going. And we'll get the three. Christine, yeah. Justin, and Mike. Ghidra, as we're calling it go through is everybody back yeah i think so all right so justin you're back as well justin i'm back sorry okay. i'm back <laughs> that's all right i just want to make sure everybody's here all right so once again 105 uh if you don't have an answer we can pass but in general we'll probably want to answer since the three of you going through all right so how do you want to do this you just want to shout out at the same time what we think and then you like can that, figure or... out how you want to do no, it i was just talking to you tyler <laughs> <laughs> I think we uh, should make Mike. The, I think we should make Mike the captain. We'll collaborate, and you make the final call. No, 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 no. No, that's what we're doing. Let's go. All right, all right, we'll do it. All right, Here we go. all right. Your time begins in three, two, one. Name the three first Lego League divisions that were formed this year. No clue. Oh, I have no idea. Wait, divisions meaning programs? Yep, the or... three first Lego League programs. It's like I felt. First Lego League, first Lego League Junior, and then there's the we do. I don't know. Mike, final answer. Uh, we don't know. <laughs> Pass. All right. Can who we is, go a, back who is the sponsor yeah, of the 2019 sure. first robotics game? Uh, Boeing. It's not Boeing. I'm not going. All right. Boeing. Final answer. Name one of the two non-news television shows that first appeared on this year. Blackfish and the Fosters. Final answer. She's carrying us. Why not? <laughs> uh, what is the name of the 2020-2021 FTC Challenge? Theory time, baby. We'll be part of She's final answer. <laughs> She's going off right now. Uh, what, what was the first year that 3v3 play was introduced to FRC? Uh, 2005. 
2014, my freshman, or not my freshman year. Um, 2v3. 2004 was 2v2. 2005 oh, was 3v3. 2005 was 3v3. Yeah, 2005 final answer. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. Five. In time. All right, we're going to go oh, through wait, these. Pass one. Wait, you... wait, what was the first one? I, no, <laughs> name, the f no. name the three first LEGO League divisions. We don't get to go back. I don't think no, you passed you one. Can't... But... but when you say divisions, that's the... like a weird you, like word to use. No, they... <sighs> they're not divisions, okay. they're programs. Like, okay, what are they? What are the three that... programs? Oh, see. Oh. First LEGO League, first LEGO League Junior. And what's the third one? And I don't know. Why don't you guys answer one for one? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Uh, All right. Time. We're going to call that as time then. So. Ooh, pasta's mad at you guys. Pa pasta's going to find out. All right. So we'll bring Greg back on here. We'll go through these uh, one by one. Of course, if we get them right, you'll hear a ding sound. Well, you guys won't, but the audience will. And uh, if we get them wrong, it'll be a buzzer. So as we go through, name the first three Lego League divisions. This was new this year. Coming in first, Lego League actually now has three programs, and those are Discover, Explore, and Challenge. Oh. Okay. Neither one. So Greg said yeah. uh, didn't know. All right, Mr. And I, we have a dozen FLL, FLL, FLL Junior. FLL we do are not teams. correct. All right. That was so such a like. As a teacher, taken from the first website. Sorry. Well, taken from the first website. So, who was the sponsor of the 2019 first robotics game? Greg said Boeing, and our uh, Ghidra said Boeing as well too. Boeing is correct. One to one. That was a gimme, right? So name one of the two non-news television shows that first appeared on this year. Uh, Greg said Blackish, uh, and uh, the Ghidra said uh, Blackish uh, as well too. Blackish is one of them. The other one was Duff Takes the Cake. Uh, so two to two. Oh, yeah. Uh, what is the name of the 2020-2021 FTC challenge? Greg said replay. And Christine and uh, end up answering theory time. It's Christine. actually ultimate <laughs> goal. <laughs> ultimate goal is the answer. Two to two. <laughs> so... With that said, one of you got this last question right, and whoever wins, either once again, Greg 2005 will, for sure. Greg That's will get. <laughs> let me finish. Either Greg will, <laughs> he, Greg will get out. The, the whole buildup's gone now, Mike. Thanks. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was so excited. Always, so we'll, we'll bump it up. It'll be eighty dollars uh, next time. So uh, that is true. Three v three play was introduced in two thousand five. That is yeah. three to two. The Gidra win. Greg, I'm sorry. Thanks for playing. They'll appreciate it, man. Uh, one year off. One year off. Well done. Carried us. Wait, we won. Yep. Yeah. So, yep. So you get Finally, you, you get your winner's like music is playing in the background right now, just for you. Uh, we're gonna end what up. What do we get? What do we get? What do we get? We're splitting the 140. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you get to have know. it go on for the next uh, round on here. So, uh, with that said, as we as we wrap up this uh, interesting ending of the show, uh, so uh, just want to do a quick roundtable uh, as we go through uh, with Christine first. Anything uh, you want to wrap up with either just on the topics or just what's going on with your life, anything like that before we end the show. Yeah, so real quick, something that um, my students and the Compass Alliance and headquarters, specifically Jamie Luce, the FRC team advocate extraordinaire and also an educator, um, mm -hmm. for those of you who didn't know, she is a jack of many trades, um, are working on basically the equivalent of the coaches and mentor guide and supports that you get in FLL and FTC and FLL Junior for FRC. and. It's been really awesome working on them. Um, they're in the works and hopefully in the fall, there'll be a good release of um, worksheets and like packets that we're working on that you'll be able to use um, either to integrate like or onboard new students and mentors onto your team um, or use it in person if you're lucky enough to meet in person. But those will be published um, at some point, probably in chunks because teams are really looking for things to be able to utilize to do remotely. Um, some of them are gonna be technical um where it's gonna give you know a teacher who just decided i'm gonna sign up for frc and make a rookie team um there'll be really good technical supports um and then on top of it there's a lot of like team development stuff um they're gonna be getting some input from like the woody flowers um group on some of the like core values stuff that woody published videos about um so you can work on those things but that's what the neutrons have been working on since i would say about the spring. Um, so it's been exciting to see those kind of evolve. And it's been nice as like a teacher after doing all this like remote stuff, having some good input um, to help develop them. But personal life, uh, just trying to figure out what my job's going to be. Uh, it's definitely not a fun thing, not having any like 
landing point right now, um, especially as a specialist that teaches at multiple schools. Um, I'm honestly very worried and anxious about how I'm going to be able to teach and stay safe and be able to go visit my family in Connecticut. So we'll see. But um, yeah, Brandon's gotten real good at grilling um, and pizza <laughs> in his uni. And we have a MFD trigger grill right now that you can actually like use your phone to control it. So awesome. All things pandemic aside, like there's some really good food happening here. Um, Thanks for reminding yeah. me. I, I'm not going. To, I was supposed to go outside. I was supposed to go to Boston in like a week or so, and that's not happening. Now. I know. So all, all, all this good food that got mentioned, I'm missing out the on. The food so. industry will continue to be amazing here. All, right. um, all the places that I listed off, especially the donut places, will be here. And if they're not, I'll just start <laughs> shipping them. Awesome. Um, real quick, yep. I do want to say big shout out to every like school teacher out there right now, or any staff member that is, you know, getting ready to go back and try to teach students. But more so, the like in Norwood, especially the um, like food services staff, like, holy shit, they are the most amazing people on the planet. They fed our families. And like, this is probably true for a lot of districts. They fed families from like day one of us going remote until like, I don't know, a week ago. And I remember awesome. coming in to my classroom the other day and seeing them. And then like, they know the families, they give them extra food. Like those are the unsung heroes right now that I hope are, being like you know more appreciated it's the people that are doing beyond like what they're required to do to make sure that people are safe and and doing okay so shout out to those people awesome i'm gonna go to mike next just because you brought up the young son heroes of things and uh, mike you and i talked a lot about uh making sure we take care of all our essential workers out there uh with just little things that you can do to help out right so um so what's going on with you man and uh, anything else you want to talk about before we wrap yeah up? so um we're finishing up my wife's, uh, my wife's travel nurse. For those that don't know, we're finishing up her contract here in El Centro, California. Uh, she's got yeah, three more weeks and then we're uh, off to somewhere new. We're not sure where that is yet. We're going to be looking here uh, very shortly, but I think we're going to stick um, out here in California. Um, the pay is better. The pay is good out here. So might as well, since we're out here, then we'll probably start heading east um, back to the East coast um, after that. But yeah, um, semester starts coming up here, as mentioned, you know, kind of stay at school for me. Um, but yeah, I know like Tyler, you referenced the, the, uh, just now and before that, um, the show we did earlier in April, just about, you know, supporting our healthcare workers, first responders, law enforcement, teachers, like there's just not easy, like being on this call tonight with you guys, I just can't imagine the uncertainty and all that. Uh, like I said before, I was very blessed and that must change for me. Um, but hearing you guys and my brother and, and everything going on, um, just, I just can't imagine, um, you know, what all that you guys are going through. So, uh, reach out to reach out to your teachers, um, see what you can do for them. Uh, even if it's just something little, just bring it like even just a meal, you know, something like that. It's just something small, um, can really go a long way. So yeah, that's about it for me. Awesome. Justin, why don't you take it home for us? Yeah, just, you know, it's crazy to, we you know just to kind of bring it full circle. We talked at the top about, um, I just, I'm flabbergasted to think that it's been five months since we've been all on together and how much has, has uh, transpired in that time. But um, just try to, you know, be supportive of, of everyone. You know, we're all, it, the one kind of, it's been a little bit frustrating at times to see the the division that this is causing. But at the end of the day, like it is something we are all going through together, you know, as a, as a human race. Um, so just look out for your, your, your fellow um, person and, you know, try to be kind and, just kind of do what you can do your part to to get us through this i i am fully confident we will get through this we've we've been through um much worse as a a, a race um but yeah just just be kind try to do your part and we'll come up better on the other side i think one one thing to tack onto that come to the table with solutions everybody yeah. already knows what's screwed up and sucks and is wrong and like what we can't do and what won't work like the best thing you can do is like think about what you're able to do or like what seems like an obvious like thing to do um, and figure out a way to like get somebody else to understand how to use that. Like I put in chat, like even little things like I'm constantly bugging first community members like, hey, can you help me with this or that? Because the reality is I don't have time to like go through a training to understand how to make the Excel sheets like line up and turn one color. But somebody that I mentor with does so even little things like that like oh want some help with like google slides like anything is helpful at this point besides complaining so be Amen good examples of how to not be 
a magical Facebook expert, um, like go out and ask people what they need help with. I think that's what the first community is best at is like networking and like utilizing the like power of people working together and, you know, looking for solutions instead of finger pointing. So. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Well, thank yeah. you so much for everybody for uh, being on tonight, providing perspectives. And of course, uh, for the four of us being friends, I thank you all for that. It's great to speak with all of you again uh, and, and then share an experience like this, uh, you know, in, in regards, even if it's in some of the worst times like this, to be able to see uh, your faces again uh, is, is a treat for me this evening and it's made my night. So thank you for that. Uh, thank you to everybody, by the way, who's helped support the stream. We still need your help to keep fun, loud, live, and independent, uh, especially honestly in times like these. Subs drop down a lot. It's off season, that sort of thing. So those who are stepping up a lot, Thank you so much uh, to help make this happen. We really do need your help. Uh, for that, you can do so through uh, Prime Gaming, which is what Twitch Prime is now called now. Uh, we have YouTube Join will be coming soon if you want to subscribe through YouTube. Uh, and we also have our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash first updates now. Check us out on YouTube under first updates now. All the socials, same thing. And then also on podcasts as well. Uh, with that said, uh, tomorrow, if you're watching live, we do have uh, a, a CAD challenge going on. I'm sorry, I'm blanking the name off the top of my head. Uh, for that, uh, and then next week, uh, we're actually, I think we're going to reschedule our fun gaming night will be next week uh, for that. So make sure you do that uh, tomorrow. Sorry, Containment Design CAD Challenge at 8 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We're going to sign off. With that said, thanks for watching First Updates Now. We'll see you next time. Talk to you then. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.